When I designed AP50, my main goal was to create a course where students could take ownership of their learning. In other words, they don't learn physics because we want them to learn physics or we tell them to learn physics. No, they learn physics because they want to learn physics. They, they really take ownership of this desire uh, to learn. As a consequence, the learning becomes more fun. In fact, if you step into my classroom any day, you can see the students having fun, so wanting to learn. So the U vector is just based on the current? One of the distinguishing features is that AP50 has neither lectures nor any examinations. Lectures, in my opinion, are a very outmoded approach to teaching. I mean, I don't want to say that lectures have no purpose whatsoever, but as the exclusive vehicle for teaching and learning, they don't do much more than a book does from which the lectures are taken. I thought I would first spend a few minutes actually presenting to you, which I know I don't do very often, uh, but giving you an overview of where we are. The absence of the lecture style in the classroom and the existence of the teams, I think, is the perhaps the greatest strength of AP50 because you're working with your peers and the, while the professors can come in and help you at any time that you need the help, uh, working with your own teammates, with your peers, has strengths uh, beyond the lecture style because you can really have that one-on-one -on -one level of interaction. This is my first time co-teaching a course and I feel that this course not only teaches our students to work collaboratively but also instructors to work collaboratively. I've learned so much from the teaching staff as well as Professor Eric Mazur. E is pointing to the left and DL is pointing perpendicular. For 30 years at Harvard I taught in a standard lecture theater based on the Greek amphitheater, space that the Greek used for performances. And I think research has shown that students learn very little while they're sitting in such a space. The only thing that happens is that they take down the information in their notebooks and they have to make sense of it outside of the classroom. If you step into the AP50 classroom, you see a very different scene. You see students sit in groups around table. It's student-centered rather than being instructor-centered. In fact, there's no place for the lecture even to lecture. It's impossible to lecture in that space. In fact, if you step in the classroom, you'll see students teaching each other, standing at these mobile boards that can be put anywhere in the classroom explaining the material to each other in their own words. In AP50, we have no exams. Instead, we have an activity which we call the readiness assurance activity. And the goal is to turn the assessment, which it actually is, into an opportunity for the student to learn and an opportunity to re receive immediate feedback on that learning. Whenever we have such an activity, students come into class and they receive a certain amount of time, say 40 minutes, to work a number of problems on their own. Their goal is to do as well as they can on it because it's 50% of their assessment grade, how well they do individually. But after that, the classroom environment changes completely because students take that same set of problems, that, that assessment, again, but as a team. They see for each, on their screen, they see for each of the questions that they've answered, the answers of all of their teammates, and now they need to reach agreement on which of the diversity of answers is correct. So you'll see students go to the board, talk to each other, debate which of the answers is correct, and then finally decide to enter what they believe is, as a team, is the correct answer. Each month, we have a project fair, and these project fairs fall into three different categories. We have either an oral presentation, or we have a design fair, or we have a poster presentation. Our first project, of the first semester was to have students design a Rube Goldberg machine. Now Rube Goldberg 
is an artist and he takes credit for designing something that could be done very simple in a very complicated fashion. So the idea was to incorporate at least five fundamental mechanics concepts in the design of a Rube Goldberg machine. I had never anticipated the incredible creativity that cracking an egg open would unleash in the students. The second project was the Crackathon, my favorite. Teams had to build safes with locking mechanisms that used electromagnetism, circuits and magnetic fields and, and other principles uh, that we were teaching. And during the design fair, each team had to try to crack, within a set amount of time, had to try to reverse engineer and open, crack open, the safes of other teams. Especially out of the three projects I like the Crackathon because it was the most hands-on, the most engineering oriented, uh, and the, the problem was kind of very unique and specific to real world problems though. In addition to teaching our students the content, they're also walking away with life skills that will prove invaluable. One of those examples is the poster, the third project this semester, which was designed to address the energy crisis. So a very important skill as a scientist is how to effectively communicate research that you've done or any kind of scientific topic for that matter. And our students have done just that via the poster fair. The skills that we picked up while doing the poster presentation I found are incredibly applicable to uh, a lot of outside, uh, really future, say, career options. Uh, for example, in research, I've been to a few conferences, presented some research, poster presentations, and it's not a skill that people are just naturally have. It's something that you really need to practice. And I feel that this class really afforded that opportunity to be able to hone those skills in. Um, even if you're coming in without those any experience previously, this is a perfect place to start. In AP50, you learn physics by doing physics. Imagine you're starting to learn to play the piano. You don't just go to a concert hall to listen to a famous pianist play the piano. You have to play the piano. In AP50, we get the students to learn physics by doing the physics. That changes the role of the instructor. In a sense, I see myself as the coach. I'm coaching my students to be the best they can be.